Overall, I feel like the market is, is a little bit schizophrenic, right? It's like a, a week it's very positive, the other week, and I'm not quite sure how it stabilizes. So be, be, if it needs an impetus, or at the moment they're, they're grappling at so many news stories, there are so many shocks or non-shocks across the world. Yeah, absolutely, and, and I think you're right. It's, and again, probably coming back to my Goldilocks and porridge analogy, yeah. analogy as we came, yeah. we go back to October, and the fear in the market was very much, gosh, we're in the 1970s. We're going to need a deep recession to get rid of inflation. Then that narrative swung a little bit too much, I would argue, early in the year, back towards the Goldilocks. Oh, it turns out inflation is going to disappear all of its own accord. We don't even need that recession anymore. The central banks can therefore focus on growth. They can cut interest rates, support the economy and earnings. And both the bond market and the equity market, I felt, had just got a little carried away. It was a little too good to be true. I think we're now just seeing a reassessment of quite how resilient growth is going to be, but also the key indicator for us is still going to be inflation. If those core numbers are sticky, then the central banks are going to be a little bit more hamstrung about quite how much they can focus on growth. I mean, regionally, do you still focus on the US as I, more stability or not necessarily? Coming back to the fiscal story, I mean, I do think that the, the change in Europe post-pandemic, post-Russia, is really significant. And therefore, I think, certainly relative to um, valuations, I think we're more optimistic about Europe as an asset class than we were you know, for the prior decade. Um, and I also think one of the things I'm a little nervous about is that the rates market got a little too carried away about the central banks being able to quickly, preemptively cut rates. And therefore, as we see those rates markets, which clearly they're already taking out some of those cuts, I think that story will continue. That, to me, puts some of those growth, those mega cap tech valuations a little at risk. And that, again, speaks to perhaps less weight on the US and a little bit more diversification elsewhere.